uh, the restatement of the U.S. law of international commercial um, arbitration um, is an attempt to identify the role of the courts over the life cycle of an arbitral proceeding. So our uh, restatement is designed uh, chapter by chapter to focus on what courts are asked to do and among the things they're asked to do, what are they willing to do? And if they're willing to do it, how do they go about doing it? Now, if you look at the life cycle of an arbitration, uh, and particularly the role of courts in the life cycle of arbitration, we really have three phases. We have three fundamental phases. We have the role of courts in ensuring that an arbitration takes place. One party says, this other party has an obligation to arbitrate, the other party resists. Uh, we get a court uh, involved in the question of whether the arbitration agreement is enforceable. This is obviously a pre-arbitration phase. If the arbitration is launched and a proceeding takes place, uh, we need to consider, do national courts get involved? What roles might they play? Each of the reporters brings a very unique perspective or unique lens through which they approach the questions and the material that we, that we address. So George, as sort of the fearless leader of the group, uh, has uh, been teaching for so many years transnational litigation and international arbitration, and he also has a specialty in European Union law, which interestingly enough uh, comes up with some degree of frequency. Uh, Jack Coe, on the other hand, his, his sort of intellectual and scholarly background I think is more oriented towards conflicts of law and international, public international law, and he brings those perspectives and insights. Christopher Hosel, uh, who is our other uh, reporter on the restatement, uh, is, I think has been said publicly, uh, to be the number one expert in the world on the meaning of the Federal Arbitration Act, uh, and I think that's uh, true. Uh, his, his, he comes to that through domestic arbitration. Uh, my background, actually, is, you might say, scholarly, scholarly background is sort of a law and sociology approach, and I tend to focus on the conduct of individuals in arbitration. The genesis of this restatement is really a very interesting one. If you go back to the history of restatements, if you go back to the early years of the restatement, they were exclusively, and they still are predominantly, in fields that are governed by state law and by case law. And if you think about it, state law, well, we're going to have discrepancies among the states. Case law, well, by definition, we have to read multitudes of cases to find out what the law is. So the early restatements uh, were state law centric and common law centric. We, as a field, <laughs> are anything but. So the restatement of contracts, the restatement of torts are basically restatements of state common law. Arbitration is different because we have a federal statute. Number one, it's federal law, and number two, it's based on a statute, not common law. And so the Supreme Court, what the Supreme Court decides in interpreting the Federal Arbitration Act, that's a given for us. So we have the statute and we have what the Supreme Court decides. And not only that, but we have treaties. And we don't have treaties by any means routinely in the fields that restatements cover. So uh, intuitively, there should be no restatement of US international arbitration law. But the reason there is, is because if you go back to the, the reasons why state common law subjects were uh, very appropriate, was that there was uncertainty in the law. And there is a consensus that there is a great deal of uncertainty in this field. So it is the uncertainty uh, in this field, the lack of coherence, frankly, the lack of basic understanding by courts of international arbitration that explains um, this restatement being embraced by the ALI. Uh, who, who, for whom the restatement is written, I, I think the answer is uh, everybody, but primarily uh, for judges, not necessarily federal judges, because uh, federal arbitration law is preemptive and, and in many cases is binding on state courts, uh, in part because it's a, a treaty-bound you know, jurisprudence. It's also for lawyers who want to think about these issues and perhaps find some support for what they think is a better reason position than where the law might be at the moment. So even if our primary audience might be considered to be U.S. judges and a secondary audience U.S. lawyers, we've certainly always had in mind the fact 
that foreign lawyers would be a, an equally attentive audience and particularly quite curious about it because for many foreign lawyers, uh, U.S. law and international arbitration is completely confusing and quite different than the way it operates in other jurisdictions. So we think that they'll be, I think, an important constituency for the restatement, even if not our, our primary one.